Now, I know what most of you are probably thinking. This is now my fourth video on the advent calendar. What more is there to say? Well, today, we're not just looking at the history of Star Wars, which is what we did first. We're not taking the advent and building mocks of other Star Wars vehicles, which was the second video we did. And we're not taking a look at the minifigures. In fact, minifigures are excluded from this video because there have been a lot, a lot of really good minifigures in these advent calendars and also a few expensive ones that I don't own for the purpose of this video. So we're taking a look at the builds from every advent calendar in Lego Star Wars dating all the way back to 2011, which do stay to the end because technically 2011s includes an illegal build, but I'll break that down right at the end of the video after we've looked at the rest. We'll be starting off at 2024 and taking it year by year and seeing what my favorite build is. It does explain quite a bit why I liked this year's so much because a lot of my favorite ships were represented and have had previous versions. So we'll also be comparing the two. But before we start, I'd just like to point out my fiance said I looked like Shaggy today because I have these tan colored shorts on, which I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, and a green top, and I can't unsee it. But also there will be a community poll up for more polls. Recently, I have been getting so much extra content, and not just to community polls, but also channel members. Let me bring that forward. Channel members will also have noticed there have been a lot of images and bonus content. There are some things that won't even make it to this channel until late next year. So if you do want to be in the know, join the Discord. Also get your name on a custom 3D printed tile that I personally am printing myself on the Master Moldy members board. Access to all of the instructions at a higher tier as well. A few of you have been asking how to access the instructions. I put every instruction that I ever make. And if there's a ship that I haven't made, request it over in the Discord and I will add it. And the only reason I hide it behind a paywall such as memberships, I think it's about £3.99p for the lower membership and that gets your name on the board and access to everything besides those higher instructions. The reason I hide it is just to stop people stealing my design, selling it. And it's also easier to control who has access to it by giving it away to members. Hopefully one day I can make this available through some other means. But right now, memberships is the best way to do it. I can add these onto Rebrickable as well if you wanna pay one or four of them specific instructions. The only problem is they're practically gonna be the same price as a month's membership. And if you download the instructions off Discord, they are yours forever. They don't go when your membership runs out. But like I was saying with the community polls, which I think I completely glazed over, there will be a poll today for more polls. The last almost week I have been doing community poll after community poll and hundreds of views have been voting. So first off, thank you very much for that. But if you would like to see more polls, I could do, perhaps not daily, that will definitely get a bit tiring after a while, but every other day at least, run a community poll based on the video for you to vote, and it also helps see what content you like and what you'd like to see from the channel. For instance, recently you voted that you would like to see the Dungeons & Dragons full series CMF review, and I am working on a special video to get that to you, so that will come in the next weeks, months, whenever I can get my hands on a full box of them. But let's get straight into the video. We've waffled on long enough and take a look at my favorite build from 2024. After reviewing the advent calendar, there's no ship I could have picked other than this Millennium Falcon. I genuinely think this is the best micro scout Millennium Falcon Lego have given us, especially with all the details they've crammed into such a small space. And I really like the engine on the back. They've made this a few times, especially for the advent calendars, but this is a great start to the video. No messing around here. The second build from 2023 this time is this AAT. I really like the playset of the AAT, and I think this model really gets across some of the same features. I like the way it's compact, and it feels a bit smaller than the others, but there are still loads of pieces. So it's definitely a fine addition to this list. Now we're not gonna be flying through all of these. Some of these like the 2022 gunship from the advent will take a bit longer to get through. The 22 advent is probably one of only a handful of sets I regret not picking up when it was available 
on the shelf. There are a few exclusive and rare pieces with this gunship. For instance, the front tile here with the modified clip should be in line, but it's exclusive to that advent calendar. And whilst there are a few spare pieces floating about, thanks to Lego including spares of any one by one plate brick or tile with the advent calendars and other sets, I could pick it up but it's a lot of money to spend like three, four, five pound on delivery. And that's just from the UK to get one piece. I also have two of these in dark red in my collection. No idea what I'm using them for, but I think it still looks pretty good using these color swaps. These are pretty much the only color swaps in the video. I'm pretty sure everything else I have is the correct color, but I really do like this gunship. And thanks to the larger pieces on the torso, it is one of the larger models in this video. For 2021, we have one of the models that does show up in 2024. So we will be comparing them in literally a couple of seconds. And I actually mean that this time. Usually it takes a bit longer to get around to what I'm saying. But this is from a Mandalorian based advent calendar. So it had to be the Razor Crest. And like I said, we did get another one this year. This one on screens is the 2024 one. And as we rotate round, I think the older ones actually better. They are completely different in terms of parts used, even in sizes. The older one is one longer at the front, which I think based on scale, the new 2024 one is definitely a bit better. But if you could combine both of these, you'd probably end up with the perfect Razor Crest. I mentioned this in yesterday's video, but one of my favorite builds of all time is this A-Wing from the 2020 advent. And it's fitting because I actually turned the sequel trilogy, which we did get a few sequel trilogy minifigures, Resistance A-Wing into a Return of the Jedi A-Wing in yesterday's video. So check that out if you want to but it's really, really sleek and still one of the best models in my opinion. 2019 was a hard choice because not only did I want to pick the Minoc or the Mouse Droid, but we also got a few cool models like the Jakku Quad Jumper and even an MTT. But I picked this droid tank, which we see rolling up on the beaches of Kashyyyk. I'd love to get a playset of this and also build my Wookiee and droid armies, but I think it's a really sleek model and I especially like how they used a few of those slope pieces towards the front to get them angles that you wouldn't get with regular Lego plates. To combat that droid tank or perhaps the AAT from earlier, we have this fighter tank all the way back from 2018. And what I really like about this are the antenna pieces on the side and this backpack piece which slots on the back getting a third snot brick on the back of the tank. I feel like the further back we go with these advent calendars, the more interesting techniques they use. And recently, they've just become a lot more simpler than they used to be. 2017's advent calendar had a few different Rebels ships and minifigures in. And I really like the First Order troop transport, but I've gone with this ghost. And the advent did also come with a model of the Phantom, which sits on the back of the ghost however they're definitely not scaled with each other and i much prefer the newer connection here they are side by side and you can see the newer ship is a little bigger and has a better phantom on the back but i still prefer the older model and think it's the best from its respective advent i'm not sure if you could see the tops from the previous angle but i'd also like to take note that the colors are arranged differently, but on the older Ghost, I definitely prefer those plates used as engines. From 2016, we have another possibly controversial choice, but I've gone with the Venator. Again, there are a load of good models. We did get an AAT, a Slave 1, an Interceptor. Even Kenobi's Delta is definitely close to this. But I'm a big fan of the Venator. And when comparing it with the new one, I prefer the front of the old one and the bridge but the engines have definitely been improved compared to the 2016 version. So again, perhaps I'll have to make a model out of the two of these. 2015 was not hard at all. This Jabba Salvage is so simple yet so accurate to what we see on screen at this scale. There was another A-Wing that came close, but I don't think there were many good models this year. And I think it's purely because the new one uses so many more pieces and almost overcomplicates a simplistic design that I still prefer the 2015 version, especially as it come with this Sarlacc pit, which you could 
combine the two models together, much like the Ghost and Phantom, and have the Salvage flying over the Sarlacc pit. I definitely need to add a brown Tylos stud as a little skiff. Again, you can't really see it that well from the camera angle I have chosen, but it really does look so cool. 2014 had a bunch of really good models, but I've gone with Anakin's Delta Interceptor. Once again, we've got that backpack piece on the back stud, which not only flattens off the top, but also enables a yellow cheese slope to hang back there. And it's not quite as detailed as the Kenobi one we see later, but I really like how they've used a mix of jumper plates and tiles to get that angle you see of a Delta Starfighter. We got three more advents to go, and this is where the fun begins. First up, we have 2013's AT. TE Walker and besides the fact that they've given it some sort of butt at the back it does look so so cool I like the legs and the fact that the middle leg does stick out and the turret on top is also pretty cool I'm not quite sure what this stud is meant to represent but it does remind me of the carry handle on the later model and it just looks so funky that this has probably even made my top three of this video from 2012, some of you may have assumed I was going to go with the N1 Starfighter, which I have a few of sitting in the garage in my city. But I've actually gone with this Vulture Droid, which I've built more times on the channel. If you check out especially some of the videos I did last year, you'll see this model pop up quite a few times. And it actually pairs well with that N1 Starfighter. Last but most certainly not least, in 2011, we got this homing Spider Droid. And this is where we shift from talking about advent calendars to possible illegal techniques. You see, this build is held together via mostly a snot brick, and that is true for all the pieces you can currently see. But the piece in my hand is actually being held on by or held in by a Technic half pin with a stud connection on the end. I don't really know my Technic terms. But either way, many people will consider this an illegal technique. But is it? Because if I turn it upside down, you can see the pin does fall out. So it's not in there tight. There is no tension stop in the brick. And the reason that this actually works and isn't an illegal technique, there is a better technique that I will show you in just a minute, is because when the pin goes in, each of these snot studs on the side, which stands for studs not on top. So all of the studs that aren't on top of the brick, even though it's true for the one on top too, have a hole in it. So that gives the pin enough room to pop open and act like a Technic brick. Don't get me wrong, it's not something I can see LEGO using today just because of the stigmatism around Technic pieces with LEGO. They like to keep Technic to Technic and Lego to Lego, unless we're talking about the Technic bricks with the pin or axle holes, but this is completely legal. Now, as for the better technique, if you were to give this antenna a one by one stud with a hole in and put this comlink element in, this does work and connects through to the stud with the hole at the top. And I've actually used this recently for one of my member exclusive builds that I've put only on the members discord. The only problem is with bricks that don't have any holes in and using Technic bricks in them, you'll see that it kind of pops in but not very nicely and there is a lot of friction keeping this in. It hasn't popped open so can also easily be slid out and that makes it an illegal technique. So not only do you now know my favorite Lego Star Wars advent calendar builds of every year, but perhaps you even learned something about illegal techniques. So let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite advent calendar build that stands out to you. I'd love to hear it and check out both the videos on screen now. And thank you so much for making it to the end of the video and watching all the way through. And may the bricks be with you always.